George Dvorsky, Wikipedia Audio George P. Dvorsky is a Canadian bioethicist, transhumanist, and futurist. He is a contributing editor at io9 and producer of the Sentient Developments blog and podcast. He was chair of the board for the Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technologies and is the founder and chair of the IEET's Rights of Non-Human Persons program, a group that is working to secure human equivalent rights and protections for highly sapient animals. Dvorsky is a secular Buddhist, progressive environmentalist, ancestral health advocate, and animal rights activist. Primarily concerned with the ethical and sociological impacts of emerging technologies, specifically, human enhancement technologies, he seeks to promote open discussion for the purposes of education and foresight. He writes and speaks on a wide range of topics, including technoscience, ethics, existential risks, artificial intelligence, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and futurology, from a democratic transhumanist perspective. Dvorsky presented an argument for non-human animal biological uplift at the IEET Human Enhancement Technologies and Human Rights Conference at Stanford University in May 2006 and wrote the first published article in defense of the Ashley treatment in November 2006, and subsequently the only bioethicist cited by Ashley XS parents in their defense. Non-Human Rights and Ethics Dvorsky also presented an argument warning of the decline of democratic values and institutions in the face of existential and catastrophic risks at the global catastrophic risks. Building a Resilient Civilization Conference in November 2008. Dvorsky, along with Milan M. Serkovic and Robert Bradbury, published a critique of SETI in the May 2012 Journal of the British Interplanetary Society arguing that SETI techniques and practices have become outdated. In its place, Dvorsky, Serkovic, and Bradbury advocated for what they called Dysonian SETI, namely the search for those signatures and artifacts indicative of highly advanced extraterrestrial life. Dvorsky has written extensively in favor of space exploration and has both promoted and criticized various megascale engineering concepts. Dvorsky gained some notoriety in 2012 after writing about Dyson Spheres hypothetical structures intended to collect the entire energetic output of a star with solar power collectors. While Dvorsky presented it as a solution to humanity's resource needs including power and living space, Forbes blogger Alex Knapp and astronomer Phil Plate, among others, have criticized Dvorsky's article. Dismantling Mercury, just to start, will take 2x1030 joules, or an amount of energy 100 billion times the U.S. annual energy consumption, kinda glosses over that point. And how long until his solar collectors gather that much energy back, and we're in the black? At 1 o which is the distance of the orbit of the Earth? the Sun emits 1.4x103j slash SEC per square meter. That's 1.4x109j slash SEC per square kilometer. At one-third efficiency, that's 4.67x108j slash SEC for the entire Dyson sphere. That sounds like a lot, right? But here's the thing if you work it out. It will take 4.28x1028 seconds for the solar collectors to obtain the energy needed to dismantle Mercury. That's about 120 trillion years. Other publications including Popular Science, Vice, and skeptical blog Weird Things followed up on this exchange. None of them note the above numerical inaccuracies although Weird Things does point out Plate's misunderstanding regarding bootstrapping, 
which Knapp agreed with in an update to his post. James Nicole noted in his blog that Knapp seriously underestimated the area of a sphere. An anonymous commenter claiming to be Knapp indicated in response that a unit conversion error had been made. Uplift Ethics Existential Risk Dysonian SETI Space Development Dyson Sphere Notes